Well, it's not even close. Best dress this week. Drew Brees. Suit and tie. Said he uh, got dressed up for this show. Obviously, you've never seen this show if you got this <laughs> dressed up for it. Welcome. How's life? Everything's good. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, I saw you yesterday on NFL Live. You were talking about how you'll look at offenses and say, how do I steal something? Well, I don't know if you said steal, but how do we incorporate that in, right. into uh, New Orleans right. offense? So is, when's the last time you said, we're going to start doing that? Oh, I mean, uh, this year going into our last game, you know, you, you're, you're, as you're studying for that opponent, and our last opponent was Seattle uh, in the uh, divisional round, you know, you're watching, you know, their previous games, and we had played them five weeks previous to that too. So you're watching that game. You're, you're watching uh, the, the four games that came after us, and then you're taking little things that, you know, teams did that, that worked and worked well, and you know that you have the personnel to do it. You know, it's not like you can just look at a game plan that somebody uh, executed against the team and say, hey, we're going we're gonna to do this, because you may not have – that scheme personnel. or, or those, that personnel in order to, to make that work. But, you know, I feel like we've got the personnel to be able to do a lot of things. And, listen, we have our base offense. We have our system. But you're always looking for ideas, ways to attack the opponent and do things that they're not going to be ready for. Do you want to be involved in personnel decisions? No, that's not my job. Yeah, I mean, are you talking like after football or are you saying now, right now as a player? Right now, if they go to you and say, what do you think we should do? What do you think of this player? Well, I, uh, I, I, appre you know, I appreciate that. I mean, it's... Because it's, uh, Brady says he's not involved. No, here, here's the thing. I, I'm, sure, I'm sure that um, he, you know, I, I know I, I have the type of relationship with our GM, Mickey Loomis, head coach Sean Payton, where... Um, hey, if there's a free agent guy out there that maybe I know and, and, and they, they're not familiar with that I'll, I, I might make a re recommendation. They might come to me and say, hey, what do you know about so-and-so? What, what type of guy is he? He's an extremely productive player. How do you think he'd fit in on the team? I mean, I get asked those types of questions, but it's never, you know, where I'm really being a decision maker. I mean, that's what our GM and head coach do. And I, I think we've acknowledged this before. You, you came in with a chip on your shoulder just because out of Purdue and how tall were you and could you play in the NFL? Could you start in the NFL? Now we see these other quarterbacks coming in. Can they still play with a chip on their shoulder? Like Russell Wilson went in the third round. Right. Uh, Johnny Manziel is going to be coming in. Teddy Bridgewater. These aren't big quarterbacks. Uh, can you have that chip on your shoulder even though you've had predecessors who've done well at that position? Yeah, you know, I, I think that maybe that stigma is 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 leaving a little bit um, because you've had some guys that have come into this league and had success, and maybe they haven't been the prototypical type guys. Um, the game is constantly changing. You know, look at um, kind of this evolution of the read option. You know, it's been incorporated into a lot of offenses here over the last, you know, two years. Do you like it? Well, we're not running it. <laughs> <laughs> could you? Um, could if, you? If I could run like Russell Wilson, maybe we would. Uh, we would do a little bit of it. But yeah, we did. We did it in college, a little bit, um, on a very, a much more simplistic scale. Maybe uh, you know, at times we'll see film of the Washington Redskins and RG3 and you know Seattle and San Fran, and you watch those guys executing it. And there's more complications now to it. I mean, you, you know, they've they've really evolved with it, and so. Um, I think it takes, obviously, a special type of quarterback to be able to do those types of things. He's Drew Brees joining us, Dan Patrick Show. I, I, we, uh, you guys were also talking last night with uh, Trey Wingo, and you were talking about what you would take from Peyton Manning. And I think it's interesting where uh, somebody talked about accuracy. I think Jaws did or Trent Dilfer did. Uh, you talked about command, that there's a command to him in the huddle. What, what does that mean? Since they don't huddle... Where is where is that command with Peyton Manning that you envy? Uh, well, it's it's a uh, it's confidence, and, and confidence comes from preparation. So, you know that Peyton Manning is going to be one of the most prepared guys that's on that field. Um, he's going to walk to the line of scrimmage. He's going to assess the defense. He's they're not going to show him anything more than likely that he has not seen or anticipated, and then he's going to get to the absolute best play that he can according to the, to the look that they're giving him. And I mentioned this uh, on the show as well, is that 
you never want to have a wasted play. I mean, the the game games now are determined so much by a play here, a play there that you just can't afford to have a wasted play. Well, what I mean by that? Well, I know the look that we do not want to run this run play into or this pass play or whatever it might be. And so if we get that look, we can't afford to have that negative play and set us back and potentially have to punt. No, let's get into a better play that's going to get, a, get us positive yards, continue this drive, go down and get points because that could be the difference in this game. The last defensive player that you went in the other direction of, that you shied away from in the passing attack? Um, well, I would say you, you're never just completely avoiding somebody, but you also have to be very wise as to <laughs> when, <laughs> when you, you are go. attacking <laughs> that area. And I'll just go off of the last game we played. Seattle Seahawks, Richard Sherman. Um, you know the types of routes that he's going to sit on, that how he's going to play it, and it would be <laughs> it would be the, the wise decision not you're, to. You're choosing your words carefully I, I, well, here. I, I mean, <laughs> you don't want to give him too much credit here. Well, well, here's the thing. No, I mean nobody is is completely locked down. Nobody is just unbeatable. Um, but you have to pick and choose your moments, and you have to know the types of things that might be his weaknesses. Now he doesn't have many. Um, you also know the the times where hey you're just you're certainly not going to want to just put one up for grabs over there where he is just because you know he's he's too good his ball skills are too good is he even the best player in that secondary? Well, it, it's hard it's hard to say he's as valuable at corner as maybe you know Earl Thomas is at free safety. I think Earl whatever, Thomas like, is the best. I think player he's back here. I think he's a great player. I think he's a great player. Um, you know I think they all complement each other very very well. And I'll give you an example. You know. Half of Earl Thomas's interceptions this year have come from sprinting over to a throw that was made outside, and a guy like Richard Sherman jumps up and tips the ball, and there's Earl Thomas to make the play. Yeah. So, you know, Earl Thomas gets the interception, but, you know, who really made, made that play? play? Well, Sherman made that play, and then vice versa. You know, here's Earl Thomas making a, a, a hit or a, a, a deflection or causes a ball to be rerouted based upon his alignment, and then somebody else makes a play. So. Those guys in that secondary complement each other very well. I, I think when it comes, and, and I, I appreciate the comment on Jimmy Graham, because I think you were honest when you were talking about, you know, he doesn't want to be franchise tag, and, and the fact that he'd like to be a wide receiver or designated wide receiver instead of a tight end, you can make more money. Were you speaking from a Saints quarterback perspective on this or just an outsider looking at this and saying let me give you my opinion on Jimmy Graham no, no I, I was I was asked the question is Jimmy Graham a wide receiver or a tight end I didn't realize that somebody was taking that and and choosing <laughs> oh, no. and choosing choosing to make it a a contract you know discussion um, no have you talked to Jimmy I, I Graham I, said since? A, I think I said he's a tight end because he's he's 6'6 270 pounds and and that's what tight ends look like. You Did know? you talk to Jimmy? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've seen, yeah, I've seen him since then. Okay, it, it's no big deal. Everything's okay. Well, because I would say, it really doesn't matter what I say. That has no bearing on the rules as to how he's designated as in, in a franchise tag or whatever it might be. But, but are we? I can tell you this. I will stand up on your table right now and say I want to have Jimmy Graham back. Does that make things better? All right. All right. There you go. Drew Brees is going to stand up on the table to say, I want, <laughs> I want Jimmy Graham back. There you go. There you go. That was almost as good as wrestling Jay Moore. <laughs> would you give him some of your money, though? Huh? Would I? Yeah. If he needed some, I would. You would, you would defer? I would defer. Defer money? Sure. Sure? <laughs> You're not going to get up on the uh, table and say that. No, I won't get up on the table. <laughs> no. Listen, I know what he's deserving of. He's he's uh, he's deserving what what, what it ever is entitled to him being in the position he's in. Okay, I know you're here with Xbox. What is the correct age with your little ones, where you can let them go, and let them go crazy on Xbox? Um. You know, they, 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 they haven't reached that point yet. They're 5, 3, and 18 Ooh, months. But the 5 is close. But listen, and what kids can do with technology nowadays is crazy. And what's cool about Xbox One and this, um, the face-off app is, well, at some point they're going to be locked into their fantasy stats. They're going to be watching their favorite games. They're going to be making predictions. 
Um, which it is, is all incredible cool what with, Xbox yeah. has done. It really yeah. is. You know, Xbox One's changed the game. Um, through that, through the, the face-off app, the fans have an opportunity to win tickets to next year's Super Bowl. But it's made it more interactive than ever. And it's amazing just how knowledgeable fans are now about the game, really based upon you know, apps like that that provide them the opportunity to stay so locked in with, uh, with the fantasy. I mean, how many people, I'd say nine out of 10 people come to me on the street and it's, hey man, thanks for making me a little money <laughs> on my fantasy team this year, you know? So What if your kids hilarious. say they don't want to be you when they're playing uh, man? Oh, that's, that's all good. You're okay? That's all good. Yeah. My, my, my middle son walks around the house wearing either a Jimmy Graham jersey or a Darren Sproles jersey. <laughs> and I cannot refer to him as his name, Bowen. You know, I mean, he might be getting in the cookie jar or something like that. It's Bowen, you know, no more cookies. And he'd be like, I'm Jimmy. <laughs> and so, I, okay. He's the same height Jimmy, as Sproles, no, no isn't he? No more cookies. <laughs> he, he and Sproles are about the same height, right? Um, almost. This almost. was your Tom Cruise moment, by the way. It was? Please, please, you know, please don't. No, no, that was your Tom Cruise um, moment. Okay. Yeah. And, and that would make you Oprah? Yes, nothing uh, wrong with that. Uh, okay. Nothing right. wrong. I'll take that to the bank. I'll give Jimmy Graham some money. He's Drew Brees, courtesy of Xbox. Any other info you need to give with this, with your plug? Are you? I think we've got you're it. You're got it? All right. Hey, it's great to see you, as always. Thank you. And uh, be a little more casual next time you come mm -hmm. around. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean you look nice. I mean, I just, I'll just loosen up the tie a yeah, little I mean, bit. You, yeah, I mean, just, just saying. Just kind of. I mean, look at my slobs here. Yeah. Yeah. You can do that. I, I can rock the, I, well, I wouldn't be rocking an Ohio State jersey, that's for sure. Well, that's Johnny Utah from Point Break. Keanu Reeves' character. Oh, that's so right. So Paulie got a Johnny Utah. That's right. Yeah. Johnny didn't have a good arm. No. Keanu Reeves did not have a good arm. No, but um, he had great command of the, <laughs> oh, he did? Of the offense in the huddle. I think. In the yeah. huddle? Yeah, he did. <laughs> Drew, good to see you. Thanks for joining us.